dear viewers today we'll be learning about the thoracic vertebrae if you look at the vertebral column that comprises of the cervical vertebrae thoracic vertebrae lumbar vertebrae sacral vertebrae and coccygeal vertebrae out of them we'll be learning about thoracic vertebrae thoracic vertebrae are 12 in number and you can see them this is where I have my thoracic vertebrae and these vertebrae they are different and distinct from the cervical and the lumbar vertebrae because we have the attachment of the ribs and you can see in this model which has been shown very clearly that these vertebrae has a very specific character and that we have the semicircular demi facets and they are meant for the attachment of the head of the ribs posterior part of the ribs they are attached to these vertebrae and each rib articulates with two of them but if you look at the structure the thoracic vertebrae they are distinct from their fellow vertebrae their bodies are heart shaped on their bodies there we have the demi facets their transverse processes they contain the articulating facets their laminas are flat and their spines if you can pay attention gradually they are pointed directed downwards but there is a transition my upper thoracic vertebrae they resembles a bit with the cervical vertebrae and when we go down the lower thoracic vertebrae they look more like the lumbar vertebrae now today we'll be learning individually about each and every vertebrae and there you can see in this model these yellow structures which are coming in between these two vertebral bodies and respectively you can see all across these are my thoracic spinal nerve and they are coming in between through this intervertebral foramina which is located on the side of my thoracic vertebrae now before going into the details of thoracic vertebrae let's compare the thoracic vertebrae with the vertebrae those who are above and below you're looking at here the cervical vertebrae this is my thoracic vertebrae and this is my lumbar vertebrae this is the anterior aspect of each vertebrae and this is the spine is always living posteriorly and body is anteriorly so if you look at the body of my cervical vertebrae it is beveled from its edges and the transverse process has an hole through it that is known as foramen transversum and when we come to this thoracic vertebrae look at the characteristic the body is heart shaped and the transverse process processes are showing articulating facet when we go to the lumbar vertebrae just pay attention to the vertebral body and what we see in the vertebral body in my lumbar vertebrae you can see its kidney shape or bean shape and its transverse processes they don't have any articulating facet if you look from a side view the body of my thoracic vertebrae will be having two a pair of semicircular demi facets because my thoracic vertebrae are the only vertebrae which are giving attachment to the ribs now you are looking at a typical thoracic vertebrae why we call it a typical thoracic vertebrae it it has its own distinguishing features and that is what the presence of these costal facet thoracic vertebrae are the only vertebrae which are giving attachment to the ribs and on each side of the body of a typical thoracic vertebrae there are a pair of semi circular demi facets and if you can pay attention the upper one is larger and then it's at the junction with the upper border of my pedicle and the smaller one is comparatively smaller 
and then if you look at the body which is more of a heart shape you can see this heart shape body if you look at the vertebral foramina it is circular and if you look at the pedicle this structure is known as the pedicle and if you look at its upper border it is aligned with the upper part of the body and if you look at its lower border that one is curving medially and that is making the upper boundary of my intervertebral foramina. Where is my intervertebral foramina? I'll be bringing another vertebrae, another typical thoracic vertebrae so you can see very clearly Now you are looking at a side view of two thoracic vertebrae and then can you see this structure which is in between the bodies of these two vertebrae? This is my intervertebral disc and if you can pay attention below the pedicle of the vertebrae above and the vertebrae below in between these pedicles you can see there is an opening. That opening is known as the intervertebral foramina and these openings are there to transmit the spinal nerves. Spinal nerves leave the spinal cord through this opening in each intercostal space. If you look at the lamina, they are flat and then if you look at the superior articulating facets, they are facing backwards and laterally and if you look at the inferior articulating facets they are facing anteriorly and medially and then on the transverse processes of these thoracic vertebrae you can see this articulating facet and this articulating facet it is making a synovial joint with the articulating tubercle which is located near to the neck of my typical thoracic rib. Now we are looking at the first thoracic vertebrae and if you look at its body it is not heart shape. How we can understand? I am bringing here a typical thoracic vertebrae and there you can see a typical thoracic vertebrae look at its body that was heart shape and this is not a heart shape body it looks more like a cervical vertebral body. And then if you look at there is a large articulating facet which is there for giving attachment to the head of my first rib and there you can see where there is a very tiny demi facet that is meant for giving articulation of my head of the second rib but primarily if you can see this one is quite bigger and this vertebrae it looks more like a cervical vertebrae. Now we are looking at the 11th thoracic vertebrae and now if you can pay attention there is only single circular costal facet on the side of the body and you can see that it is extending on the root of my particle and there is no articular facet on the transverse process. So that is the distinguishing feature which makes this vertebrae as my 11th thoracic vertebrae. Now you are looking at the 12th thoracic vertebrae. It resembles L1 vertebrae. Transverse processes you can see that they are very small with three tubercles and there is no articular facet on the transverse process and there is one single large costal facet on the side of the particle and then the articular facets of the inferior articular process they are everted. So these are the distinguishing features of a 12th thoracic vertebrae and if you look at the body, body is more of a bean shaped structure. Look at this is not 
any more hard shape and this vertebrae looks more like a lumbar vertebra. Now let's look at the thoracic vertebrae. The thoracic vertebrae they are distinct because they are different and these are the only vertebrae in our whole vertebral column which are giving attachment to the ribs. That's why they have very specific feature. First look at from this superior view, let's look at the body. The body of my thoracic vertebrae is heart shape. The thoracic vertebrae also are typical and atypical type. This is I'm showing you a typical thoracic vertebrae. So the body of this vertebrae, you can see that it is heart shape. And now on the lateral side of my thoracic vertebrae, you can see there are two semicircular demi facets and these are meant for attachment of giving to the facets which are present on the head of the respective ribs. So each vertebrae is attached to two different ribs. And then if you look at the transverse process, it also have an articulating facet and this articulating facet, it articulates with the tubercle which is present on the posterior end of the rib. And then you can see that this is the pedicle and there you can see this pedicle is inferiorly, this is well notched. And then look at the spine, this is classic of a thoracic vertebrae of a typical thoracic vertebrae, it is sharp and pointed downwards and it is well distinct if you can, if you like to compare with other vertebrae of the vertebral column. After that, we are looking at the first thoracic vertebrae. The first thoracic vertebrae, its body is broad and it is different than a typical thoracic vertebrae. It's more looking like a cervical vertebrae. You can see this is the top view and this is you can see from the side view. So the body is different and the edges are beveled like my cervical vertebrae. But the transverse processes, they does not have any foramina. And but look at the spine, that is also living horizontally. And if you look at the side of the body, there you can see these two big costal facet. The lower one is very tiny and this one is meant for giving attachment to the first rib. Now we are looking at the lower thoracic vertebrae and these lower thoracic vertebrae, they are more like my lumbar vertebrae. So this is you are looking at the 10th thoracic vertebrae. Now look at across the body laterally there is one costal facet and that is going towards the pedicle. Now when we are looking at the 11th thoracic vertebrae, now you can see this one big huge articulating facet and that has moved towards the pedicle, same like the 10th one but the, it's, there is a more progression and there you can see no articulating facet on the transverse process. Going further, we are looking at now the 12th thoracic vertebrae, the last thoracic vertebrae and it has very different points. Look at this costal facet has moved all the way on the pedicle and its body, body of my 12th thoracic vertebrae, it resembles the lumbar vertebrae and transverse processes are very small with, th with three tubercles and there are no articulating facets on the transverse processes and then articulating facet on the inferior articular processes, they are everted, they are distinct and they are different from the upper ones and they are more like lumbar vertebrae.